I couldn't begin to imagine what the mailman was thinking when he delivered this odd shaped package to my tent, but they surely couldn't have guessed that it was a 35 pound guillotine blade. If they did, they would have been dead wrong. As anyone who watched the previous videos in this series will know, I'm definitely not building a guillotine. I'm just a humble lemonade salesman building a 20 foot lemon chopper. And everyone knows the most important part about cutting lemons is having a suitable blade. Fortunately for me, I have some very talented viewers, one of which used his incredible metalworking skills to craft me the contents of this package. And after weeks of anticipation and a $108 journey through the postal service, it has arrived and I can finally see what's inside. Holy shit. Shrink wrapped for ultimate freshness. This is truly a thing of beauty. You got the sigil and everything. 24 inches long, 14 inches wide, 3 eighths inch thick, and 35 pounds of solid carbon steel. Imagine this coming down on your neck from 12 feet up. Got a nice ring to it. This is the king of blades. It's moments like this when I realize just how surreal my life has become. That through various forgotten choices I've made over the years, I would end up in a situation where I'm getting guillotine blades mailed to me. Perhaps it all makes perfect sense that I've unknowingly curated my own circumstance. Maybe it's time I self-reflect and ask the question. Am I edgy? Guilty! Edgy? Is this edgy? Since the beginning of my time on the internet, just about everything that I've ever made, whether music, videos, comic books, has at some point been described as edgy. Sometimes it feels like a good thing, and sometimes it feels like an insult. All right, whatever. I wanted this edge to be razor sharp, but it's taking way too long, and I gotta get started on the mounting system. If edgy means being at the forefront of a trend, experimental or avant-garde, well, that's pretty cool. Hell yeah, I'm edgy. But if it's something or someone trying too hard to be cool, almost to the point where it's cringeworthy, well, then I sure as hell hope I'm not edgy. Um, looks like I'm gonna have to cut the workday short. There is a hurricane or something coming through, and it's coming quick. The winds are just tearing these trees apart, and I'm pretty worried about this branch that's over the tent. If that branch falls, then it's probably gonna take this tent out. This moves 20 miles to the west, and you and everyone you know are dead. All of you, because you can't survive it, and your kids die too. Well, it's definitely not ideal, but I guess for now, I'll have to just continue working from the tent and pray that the power doesn't go out. All right, so traditionally, guillotine blades weighed around 80-ish pounds, or at least that's what I read on the internet. And since this blade only weighs 35 pounds, I'll have to design the mount in a way that additional weights can be added if necessary. In order to make an effective cut, it really just comes down to three things. The weight, the speed, and the sharpness of the edge. Edgy. That's edgy. You're so edgy. Edge Lord Edgington. I guess I feel that the word has become an everything word, used to describe really anything that isn't polished for a general audience. Something that toes the line of social unacceptability. Crime, violence, death, even cringe. I guess I'm guilty of it all. All my past videos playing with knives or imagery involving nooses. To me, the intention was never to be edgy, but rather a challenge to figure out exactly where the line is that's not supposed to be crossed. I can't seem to figure out what the rules are or if I'm breaking them. It confuses me. Why does this keep happening? I must be stupid or something. I don't know why this bit keeps falling out. Somehow, I end up just creating stuff which is viscerally disturbing to people, even if it can't precisely be explained why. And this inability to recognize if I'm going too far is most likely the bane of my success. I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking it all. Maybe I'm listening to too many outside voices. Perhaps the hard truth that I have to accept is that it's not the system holding me back but my refusal to adapt to the progressing circumstances of modern times. I want to do the right thing, but at this point, I fear that all the naughty, edgy stuff that I've put out in the past has put my channel in bad graces with the platform, and it may not be possible to dig my way back out of the Shadow Realm. And there it goes.
it goes. Power's out. Well, I guess I'm done for tonight. We'll finish this tomorrow. Either way, for the time being, things are at least starting to look up again. And yet, despite my efforts, it seems it's never enough. More, more. The days when creators had a direct connection with their audience are long dead. Now, there's a middleman, the algorithm. Just a filter which only allows through that which will maximize the amount of time that people spend on its platform, watching videos with paid advertisements. Oh, spare me your self-important artistry. There are millions more out there, just like you, waiting to take your place, willing to play by the rules, and be rewarded. Stick to a mold, Rusty. The formula works. That's where they want you. Molded into simple shaped blocks that can be put into simple shaped holes. Fuck your complexity. Fuck your creativity. Fuck anything you do that can't be systematically and consistently identified, categorized, and rated with a high likelihood of being safe for consumption by the broadest possible audience. Want to put a little variety in your act? Eat shit. Stick to the formula. Stay in the box, you blank canvas, you empty vessel. Oh, how boring. Bitch, 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 bitch. Hasn't this segment dragged on enough? You're gonna lose your retention, Rusty. Here, I'll do everyone a favor. No! Enough! It's not natural! View duration, watch time, click the rate, impressions! It's corrupting our mind, destroying our ability to focus on anything for longer than three seconds without having to have keys jingled in front of our faces! Oh god damn it! And what could possibly make you think you know more than the algorithm about what works? You think the viewers know what they want, we tell them what they want. We dig the trenches through which everyone walks, and it works! Just how we want- Gotta stop listening to outside influences. Gotta quiet the voices. At least for a bit. Sometimes I wonder if I'm driving myself crazy. Some sort of defense mechanism. As though a self-induced insanity could somehow serve as a reliable alibi for my absence from personal responsibility. If I convince myself that my own choices in life are just an uncontrollable reaction to my surroundings, then I avoid any blame for the outcome of my actions. I can already see a major problem with this setup. Using these wheels, it allows for a lot of wiggle room between these railings, and that could easily cause a derailment, which is the last thing that you want with a guillotine blade. So for safety reasons, I'm gonna have to go with the backup plan. Maybe this is all a terrible idea. Socially unacceptable nonsense. Just a frivolous little project irrelevant to the hearts and minds of anyone. Maybe, but I don't believe that. I believe in some way that we're all on the same wavelength. Why am I building this? Because I have to. Because it needs to be built. Better to have one and not need it than need one and not have one. I'm not looking forward to it, but eventually I'm gonna have to move both of these up onto this platform when I actually build the body of the guillotine. Because there's an unspoken understanding that everyone is beginning to feel in their core. A growing awakening to the reality of our circumstance. The facade of a functioning civilization is dissolving and we've all fallen into enslavement under fraudulent authorities who deceive us with illusions of autonomy, safety, human rights, and the power to make change, who continuously pulls the rug from beneath our feet the second we feel secure enough to stand up. Well, I guess my mount wasn't strong enough. I'm already starting to see some damage. I made a new mount, readjusted these fasteners, I moved the bolts up so the wood wouldn't crack so easily, and made a new stopping mechanism, just temporarily for this video. I'll have to redesign all of this once I make the official full guillotine. 
Let's see what it can chop. But as everything falls apart all around us, all at once, the authenticity of our leaders is exposed. Those who claim to serve our best interest, but who would slaughter us and sell us to the highest paying butcher at the first opportunity. Every day the divide grows wider. That was more of a smush than a chop. And every day we feel ever more powerless to do anything about anything at all. And we thirst for something. Some sense of control over our own lives and the ability to hold accountable those who threaten the value and quality of our lives. The thirst in our throat to crawl out of the trenches dug for us, which keep us in our place of obedience. Our eager, parched mouths thirst. And perhaps, just perhaps, the first step to quenching that thirst is with a nice, cold glass of lemonade.